Good evening. It's good to see you. We're glad you're here. Those of you joining us online, glad you're here. And if I look slightly crooked, it's because I forgot my tripod and my phone is kind of hanging on by a thread. But uh, So if you have to sit sideways, that's all right. Don't worry about it. Uh, glad, you, glad you're with us. Uh, we have announcements remind you uh, Sunday morning. Is it crooked? Uh, am I crooked? That's the question. <laughs> That's the question. Sunday morning, Sunday school worship service at their regular times, and I encourage you to join with us for that. And uh, is this week? You want me? To... This week is breakfast, yeah. Yeah, and the next week is Memorial Day. Right. Um, I'll take five, ten minutes if you want me to. Absolutely, if you will, please, because I'm going to be gone. But if you will, uh, Memorial Day Sunday, which is the 29th, is that correct? And Gary Snow is going to be preaching that Sunday morning. I encourage you to be here for that. And Ted will do us a Memorial Day. Where, uh, where is Bethany? Bethany is at Shoe Hill. Don't know if you between Shoe Hill. Huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll, uh, that's, that's sun, Sunday morning's breakfast. That's the community breakfast, and it is at Bethany. And they will eat about 8 o'clock. Uh, get there a little few, few minutes. Of, of, uh, Shoe Hill. Is that in town or out of town? South. <laughs> a, a town of Shoe Hill. <laughs> go from your house, cross over 39, go to the bottom of the hill. When you get to the stop sign, take a left. When you get to Shoe Hill, take a left. Go just a little bit and you'll be there. We'll Got that? Well, you'll be going from your house, won't you? Not from, you're not going to come here and start, are you? <laughs> Is Charlie going with you? He okay, he, he probably knows how to get there. Uh, if not, call me on the way. I'll tell you we're already eating probably. So. But that'll be a uh, Sunday morning. All you men join with us for that. Anything else? If not, I wonder before we pray if there are those that you would like to mention for us to remember. Let's, con let's continue to remember him. And his name again was Marty Lee. Marty Lee. Let's continue to keep him in our prayers. Carol left us to remember Andy. Um, she said he's got like a really bad cold. Uh, stuff that's going around. Pete and Heather have been up with it. So, yep. You know, Sinus infection, like a little bit off. So, yep. Remember Ben and I as we travel over there. <laughs> now you're leaving tomorrow, is that correct? Friday? Friday. And driving about a hundred miles, <laughs> like six thousand. Six thousand miles. And are you are you driving? Are you driving or is Betty driving? We both are driving. Both driving. All right. Well. She's taking the car and I'm taking the truck. She's she's driving the whole time. Depending on whichever seat she's in, she'll still be driving. That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever all right well y'all enjoy enjoy and they're going all out west and i'm uh, gonna see the cowboys and whatever so. other other announcements i don't want to miss anything other prayer requests sorry I... yeah we got all our kids starting in the third grade as hard as that is to believe take an end of grade test to start tomorrow and friday math and reading and then older ones have some next week but the these young kids, and uh, the ones that in third grade, this is their first experience with that. So let's do pray for them. A lot of, a lot of pressure put on these kids at that age to, to perform on a, on a test. So let's remember them. Um, let's remember our nation. Um, of course, we had primary elections yesterday, and elections coming up in the fall, and uh, just a lot, a lot of issues that uh, we need desperately to pray about in our country. Need. God to work in people's hearts. If y'all would continue to remember my niece, Lynn Bryant, I talked to her for a little over an hour today, and she and John both still need our prayers, Lynn Bryant. Okay, um, Lynn, Lynn Bryant. Let's remember this one. Did my niece call her? She did, but I haven't heard anything. She told me she was updated on Friday because she was more than likely to have answers for both. Okay, so I'm not Friday. Okay, Annette's daughter and sister having surgery this week, and Annette, of course, still dealing with, with her issues, so let's remember her. 
Anybody else? Baby, what's the way to tell me? Um, my, doc, my family doctor doesn't seem to be too concerned, but I go next, uh, next Thursday to get a shot, and I'm going to tell them I want a report so I can take it upon myself to make sure I'm going to just be safe. Okay. Uh, Kathy um, went to the doctor today. She was having back pain uh, in the weekend, but she called me this morning and she went, or is it lunchtime, I think actually, and she went to the doctor yesterday and they uh, did some x-rays and everything and said that she really has some, uh, she, she said my back's all messed up is the term she used. Um, there, um, and, 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 she, and they've got her lined up for, uh, consultation with a doctor re related to that but i think it's like the middle of june before they could get her in so uh they were putting her on some medication and some uh some things to try to ease the pain uh she said she, she really especially can't sit for very long so uh, so let's remember kathy yeah. And I'm sure there's all of us have those that we think of that are on our minds and hearts. Rick, if you will, if you'll lead us, let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we gather here in this place, first of all, we just want to tell you that we love you. And Lord, we know you love us. And you demonstrate <coughs> Lord, as we come here now and gather here to study your word, we ask your blessings upon our, your under-shepherd, our pastor. Lord, just uh, give him special knowledge and special delivery of your word uh, by the leading of your Holy Spirit. Lord, let him uh, say and do the things that uh, you would have him to do so that we might glean it for him, hear it and understand it. Lord, appropriate it into our lives. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity of this time of intercession. Uh, we are really no more like Christ, for he is sitting forever at the uh, right hand of you, Father, uh, making intercession for us day in and day out, 24-7. So we can never be more like him in this world than to make intercession for others. Lord, as we've lifted up these names tonight, Lord, you know their every need. And Lord, we would just ask that you meet that need according to your will and your purpose for their lives. Lord, we would just pray that all would go through their procedures, whatever they may be, uh, with flying colors, and Lord, their recovery would be quick, and there would be a, a, a wonderful healing. But Lord, we also realize that that doesn't always happen in this life. And so, Lord, whatever they go through, Lord, help them to know that your grace is sufficient. Lord, that you'll get them through it no matter what. Father, we just lift up this time we have together tonight to you, to love you, to worship you, and to study your precious word. Father, teach us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Linda, you go to the truck and look in the console and give me my glasses. I check, make sure I got my pants on because I forgot every everything tonight. There's a black case in there that says Ray Man. It's got a pair of reading glasses in it. Um, I, I am becoming a little bit um, more dependent on reading glasses, and it really irritates me because I wore glasses from the time I was in about the fourth grade. I was in high school, and then I got, well, out of, out of high school, and I got contacts and wore them several years, then had LASIK. I've done real good with it. But um, when I turned um, the age that I am, <laughs> I, uh, I have noticed, especially last year when I had the issue with my retina, my left eye is definitely not as, 
as good. I can still see, but uh, but I I cannot read small print, so uh, so I'm stuck with wearing glasses and. I don't want to wear them all the time, so uh, I might have to get me. There, yeah, I need some of those. There you go. Them little magnet ones that catch or hang on a string. Why? I keep, I keep sunglasses hanging around my neck all the time, so I reckon I have to start doing that with my reading glasses. But anyway, this evening I can read well enough to tell. We're in the book of Mark, chapter seven. Mark chapter seven, and if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn, and we're going to begin with verse thirty-one. Mark chapter 7, verse 31. Thank you, dear. All right, that's much better. Mark chapter 7, 31. Again, departing from the region of Tyre and Sidon, he came through, this is Jesus, came through the midst of the region of Decapolis to the Sea of Galilee. Then they brought to him one who was deaf, and had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears, and spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephapatha, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed, and he spoke plainly. Then he commanded them that they should tell no one, but the more he commanded them, the more widely they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Now, if you notice some things, this is just one of many stories in the Gospels of Jesus healing, but I think there's a couple of things we can notice right from the beginning with this, and uh, first is the, the man that's described, he's described as a man uh, that, was, uh, that was deaf, that is, he's unable to hear, and, and sometimes we use the term deaf and dumb, but instead it's, it's described here and had an impediment in his speech, but he in fact could not, uh, could not hear and could not speak or could not speak clearly as it was. And it says, and they begged him, to put his hand on him. Now the reason was the man could not ask for himself. He was unable to speak, so he's unable to ask. Apparently he had family, had friends, uh, just some gathered around. And uh, and what has happened is that the more, and, and it says here later in this passage, but it was true before that, the more that Jesus told them not to tell people the things he was doing, the more they did tell people. I mean, you know, when people are blind and they're made to see, or you feed several thousand people, or you do the lame and get to walk, I mean, it is, that makes the news. I mean, there's no way you can help. And so everybody was hearing these things and hearing. And so Jesus by now was becoming very famous. I mean, people knew about him, and Jesus didn't want to be famous. And that's, that's amazing because most preachers, there's nothing they would like better than a big crowd. So, you know, if you, whatever you can do to draw the crowd and get them there, uh, that's, that's, you know, that would be what they want. But Jesus didn't want a crowd there because they thought he would do a miracle. He wanted to get people to understand why he was there. And so when we talk about him performing miracles, Jesus seemed to be, uh, he, he seemed to be attracted to people that had a need. And, and physical needs especially seem to be the things that, that, were, that were the stories about, the physical needs that they had. But the truth is that everybody's got needs, and everybody in their own way has a handicap. And the, the, the picture here of a person who is, who is deaf physically or blind physically or unable to speak physically is only a picture or comparison of a person who is blind or deaf or mute spiritually because if a person is physically impaired and they know Jesus, one day they will be healed. But if a person is completely physically whole but they are spiritually blind or deaf or dumb, <coughs> excuse me, 
they, the worst is yet to come for them. In other words, what they have in this world is the best they will ever have. And so Jesus was always attracted to people, but he wanted to, and there, there are, are numbers of stories in the scripture where when a person came to him and, and they were in that situation, his question to ask is, what do you want? Uh, we talked about that in our message Sunday morning because the, the, the thing that would appear to be in the man Sunday morning, what did he say? That I could see. Uh, the, uh, that appears to be the greatest need a person has. Uh, there's an occasion where Jesus uh, healed a man, and before he did, uh, he said, your sins are forgiven. Uh, you'll remember that story, and, and they all made a big deal about it. And he said, well, is it easier to say, get up and walk, or is it easier to say your sins are forgiven? And, and obviously, it was. we would say it's easier to say something than to do something but he, he proved that he could do both. But Jesus was always concerned about needs. Well, note what, notice the specific way that he deals with this man because it says in verse 33 that he took the man aside. He took him aside. You know, Jesus is never going to put you in a situation that embarrasses you. And, and so often we find people and they have a need and, and we'll, we make an issue of the need. We point out the need. We mention the need or whatever it is. But he, he always, Jesus always, never in a way to draw attention to himself and never in a way to draw attention to the person in need was always careful about a person. And, and the, 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 the love and compassion and kindness of Jesus is probably the thing that drew people to him more than the miracles that he could perform. Uh, it, it was in, incredible. Uh, the various ways that Jesus uh, heals people in Bible. No, notice there are times that he touches people. There are other times that he just speaks a word. There's one occasion where he, uh, he made some clay and put on uh, a man's ear. Uh, in, in this particular instance, it says that he touched his ear. And, and you say, well, wonder why he touched his ear. Well, the man could not hear him if he spoke to him, but he could feel if he touched it. So maybe that was the thing. He touched his ear, uh, and then uh, he spit and touched his tongue. And, and those two places, which were where the need were, were those that resulted in healing for this man. Another uh, time, uh, the, the, a man was told to go and wash in the pool of Siloam, uh, there, there are instances in the Bible when God in all kinds of different ways uh, heals. And we find here that, that this particular way, but what it tells us is that you can't control the way that God is going to work. You see, some people believe that there's only certain places, certain times, certain ways that God can work in a person's life, but God's always at work. And he's, he's way ahead of us most of the time. It's amazing how many times, if you will allow him to, that he's running ahead of you and preparing a situation? Do you remember when, uh, when Philip was holding a great revival uh, and people were getting saved and the Holy Spirit came to him and said, leave and I want you to go down and see a man. Uh, and he went and joined himself to the eunuch, which was an individual man. He left a mass of people and went to one man. And when he got there, though, here was a man who was traveling. He was an Ethiopian eunuch, and he was reading the book of Isaiah. And why, why was it that he would happen to be riding along reading the book of Isaiah? Uh, it was because that was the exact passage that God was sending Philip to be prepared to interpret to him because he said, do you read it? He said, I read it, but I don't know what it means. Uh, and he explained it to him. And, and sometimes I think we try too hard to fit God into our box instead of saying, God, just show me the place you want me to fit in your plan. And his plan is always going to work in different kinds of ways for different kinds of people. But I think there are some things uh, that we can notice in this situation that, that maybe are almost always a part of it. One is that there's always the need to connect with a person. Jesus stopped where he was uh, and to be with this person. Uh, our message Sunday morning, we looked at the man that said he was, he was hollering off to the side and everybody tells him to be quiet. And Jesus said, no, bring him up here. Uh, Jesus was always ready to make a connection with a person. And unfortunately, sometimes that's the opposite of what we want to do. We want to be distanced from a person that's in need. Uh, I, I, I've got to be absolutely honest with you there's been times 
that I've been in the middle of doing something and I was so busy and somebody would call me or talk to me or come up to me and they really want to talk about something and I'm trying hard as I can to listen and I'm sitting saying to myself, I really need you to hurry up and finish this because I got some important stuff to do. And I need to stop and say, Lord, this is the important thing. The, the thing, if this is the thing that he's put me in a place to do, it is the important thing. And, and one of the things that we as Christians can do that will make more difference in the lives of people is to try to be careful that we never encounter somebody without trying to help them believe that they are important. Um, I, I've said a lot of times that as a church, if we're not careful, there are people that are always flying under the radar and they don't think that they matter and they really don't believe that anybody would care whether they were there or not. And that's the person you need to be most careful to notice when they are there, speak to them and pick up the phone and call them if they're not. Just let them know, hey, it matters to me that you're not there because it certainly matters to God. So to, to stop and make the connection with a person and then to always to show compassion, which we see that Jesus did here. Jesus found a way of sympathizing with the need of a person, no matter who they were, no matter where they were. This man, he, he understood that he had a need, and that need was to be able to hear or to be able to speak. Uh, and the truth is, the closer we get to people, the more aware of their needs we will be, but also the closer we get to God, the more aware of other people's needs uh, we will be. And then we need to always be ready to speak, always ready to share, uh, because we, uh, we find here Jesus uh, says a, a word that, that went back probably to his childhood, the language of his childhood, and he said it mean, meant be open. I, I believe that's how you pr pronounce it. And it, it means to be open. And immediately his ears were opened, uh, and he could speak. Now, notice <laughs> when Jesus says this, the man cannot hear it. But I wonder, you know, I was thinking about that this afternoon. You wonder if maybe you heard the last half of it. You wonder where in the process of that did it happen. And maybe the very first thing that he heard was a, a word coming from the voice of Jesus. Wouldn't that be amazing if the first thing, a person that was blind and the first thing he ever saw was to look into the face of Jesus and spiritually the same is true for us. When we're saved, the thing that, that changes our lives, and it will change a person's life to come to know Jesus. If they're lost and they truly come to comprehend and understand what it means to know Jesus, they will, uh, they will suddenly see something that they could not see, hear something they could not hear, and experience something they could not hear otherwise. They could not experience otherwise. And then the last thing you notice uh, is in these uh, last uh, couple of verses, it says that he told them to tell no one, but the more they did, they did the opposite. And I, I, I was noticing a, a little article that I was reading with some commentary on this, and it said, notice that when Jesus told them to tell no one, they went and told everyone. When he tells us to tell everyone, we go tell no one. Uh, and so in, in that, uh, in that, some truth to that. Uh, it, what I, I tell you, what it really means is the experience we've had with Jesus may not quite be as real as the experience they did. And I understand that when you, I mean, I'm gonna tell you what. Now, if I saw if I saw somebody healed in that kind of way, you would want to share that. That'd be big news. But you know, I have seen people's lives changed. I've seen people's lives transformed, and it is big news. And I've experienced in my own life the love of Christ and the work of God in the midst of, uh, of tough times. And I, and I want to, I just, I want to tell you because I have, uh, I have the last few, last few weeks and months, uh, I have just been so overloaded and, and just really burdened by it that just so many different things going on. And it's none of it's None of it's bad, none of it's wrong, it's none of that kind of thing. It's just so much. And you just you just feel like, Lord, if some of this can't go somewhere and something happen, and just, just and and I, I was talking to Linda the other day and about something and she said, Don't you dare start something else right now. And uh, and I said, I promise. And uh and because it it there's just so many things happening and we're you know we're, we're we're just praying that some of these things are going to slow down just a little bit 
And she asked me the other day, said, what do you want for your birthday? I said, a day off. And, uh, but, but I'm working tomorrow, by, by the way, so that, that, that didn't work out. Maybe next weekend. But, um, but they, they, were, uh, they were amazed by it, and they couldn't help but tell somebody. And you know the man who's, who could hear and could speak when people heard him and said, man, I didn't, thought, I didn't think you could talk. He said, yeah, I can talk. Let me tell you something. And he had a story to tell. And all of us do. Every one of us have a story to tell. Every one of us have a message to carry. But I like what it says right here in verse 37. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, he has done all things well. He makes both the deaf to hear and the mute to to speak. Isn't that amazing that, that they saw something and they said he's done everything well. Now, it wasn't very long before they were saying he didn't do everything well, didn't he? You wonder if there was anybody that was in the crowd this day that said he does all things well that were on the streets when he came into Jerusalem and said Hosanna and were standing around Pilate's hall later when they said crucify him. It's so easy to get caught up in the crowd, but for once they told the truth, he does all things well. And so whatever it is in my life that's going on, whatever it is that I can see in other people's lives, I can always say he does things well. Let's pray. God, we thank you this evening for the time that's ours to gather around your word, the opportunity that's ours uh, to share in this study and to, to try to, to see in our lives the same things that were a part of the lives of these people that had the great privilege of, of physically walking with Jesus on this earth. And we thank you, Lord, that in our life we feel that we walk with you through the power of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We just ask, Lord, for guidance each day that the lives we live will be an example and a blessing to other people. We lift in our prayer the various ones whose names were mentioned tonight as Brother Rick has prayed. It's not always your will for the exact thing that we desire to take place, but we desire that you help us to seek to be willing to accept your will and always to be in that. And uh, so that's what we pray for. And we pray that you go with us as we leave now uh, and help us in all of our living every day to live in such a way uh, that we'll be a blessing to other people and pleasing in your sight. And we ask you to forgive our sin. For our prayers in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming.